Beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten Today we are diving into the festive spirit with a project that combines modern aesthetics with the warmth of tradition. All that you need is a scrap piece of 2x4. I removed the rounded oversides of my 2x4 on the table saw. That gives it that more modern approach with those sharp edges. Now set your miter saw to 22.5 degrees. Trim off the end so that you have your first angle. Then flip your board over, set your miter saw to 45 degrees, and cut your first piece to six and a half inches. Flip the board over again, reset the miter saw angle to 22.5 degrees, and cut the eight and a half inch side. So let's just say you wanted to go completely rogue and take my plans, crumple them up, and throw them in the trash, and why did you print them in the first place? You would have had to print them and then crumpled them up? That's just bad for the environment. So let's say you want to just build this tree of any size, any size tree of any thickness of wood to factor in to get both of your pieces. All you would have to do is cut your first one, which could be a 45 degree angle, it could be the 30 degree angle trees, it does not matter. Cut your first angle and it is this total distance, the total length of your piece, plus your mitered thickness. So this is actually six and a half inches. These perfectly come out to two inches if you're using a two by four at a 45 degree angle. Math. So this guy is eight and a half inches and that gets you a perfectly married up piece right here. A nice perfect little peak. Flip the board over again. The bottom is to be cut to three and one fourth inches still at the 22.5 miter. The bottom base I like to leave square at 90 degrees. I cut these to three inches long. Now that we have all of our pieces, all we have to do is just use a little tight bond glue and we're going to nail it together. And then once it's done, you guys can kiss it on the sander just to go ahead and get some of these spots that aren't perfect out of it. So when gluing an end grain, just remember that it is going to suck up a lot of glue. So I like to put it on a little heavy and then go ahead and just take some off at the end. So put her on there pretty good. Put it on there good and heavy. Let it sit for a, a minute or two. I'm going to use this board just so it doesn't touch my workbench and then it gets glue on everything. We're not, we're not gluing that piece. The longer edge does not get glued at the top, so remember that. And neither does this piece. Oh, well. All right, we'll sand that off later. Uh, so the inside... <laughs> Uh, could we just wipe all this glue off and restart? Sure. Do I want to? No. Okay, so we are going both of these sides on this one and the top for your shorter side. That's all you got to glue and the bottom when it's time. So put some glue onto it, right? And then again, it being an end grain, what I like to do is just kind of let it sit for just a second. You'll see it gets a lot clearer once it sits on there for even 30 seconds at this point. Oh, a scrap piece that looks identical to all my others. Wonderful. So bam, that's all we're going to do. Wipe your glue underneath your workbench. Be careful because I, I was doing that one time and Apparently it like was sharp and it cut my hand. Ooh, workplace tragedies. So we are going to nail these bad boys together. I am using an 18 gauge inch and a half nail just because this is really thick material. And yes, wood turning with John, we will put a nail counter up there on one of these sides, okay? Is that gonna make you happy? If you comment, I'm pinning it to the top, just so you know. Now, we are gonna take these, I'm right-handed, so I'm flipping them around like this. He has set up for just a minute or two. And then we are just going to line up these tops just so that they're like that. Move this out of the way to minimize casualties. And then you're really gonna put a lot of force down onto here so that this doesn't slide and push. You're also gonna hold this guy down as well. 
I start with shooting a nail into the bottom because I'm putting a lot of pressure and I don't need something to happen and, you know, safety. Bam. So I shoot my nails so that they go in right around this area. If you're trying to get into this, this meat would even be almost okay. But again, I like just about a half an inch through this board into my actual material. That way I make sure that it has a good strong bond. Three nails onto him. You'll see a little bit of glue squirt out, but this is very smooth. So I'm very happy with that. It does kind of wiggle wobble. We'll fix it in a minute. Then we are going to take this piece here. He gets married into the bottom. You might have to pull him apart a little bit to get him in there. Again, I'm right-handed. So we are going to put just a little bit of force. And even this board, I sometimes will start him out so that he's out just a little bit because when it pushes itself together like that, that board is going to get sucked in. Like, like that, but yeah, like that. So three nails into him. Again, I got some glue coming out. That's perfect. And then I'm going to flip him around. Ooh, my boards are twisted. three into him. He looks good on this side. This side, it's a little off. And what actually can cause that is when you're going to cut your board, it can kind of travel away if you don't have a, a death grip on it. And that could have been what happened is that this angle, as the blade came down, it just kind of went away. So for the bottom board, the base, he goes like so. So I'm just going to center him with the bottom board. And this guy, I just put on some glue. And then I squeeze him into place. Make sure he's centered so you have less glue you got to clean off. Make sure that he is straight and perfectly aligned as such. And there we go. A perfect tree. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I do go ahead and remove these glue spots afterwards with a chisel and also while I'm sanding, just so that way I don't risk smearing it around and having another spot where the stain doesn't soak into the wood and you can see my glue spots. Additionally, I do not clamp these bottom boards. They are very secure with just gluing them like that. Just make sure you don't have too much glue on them to where they're actually going to shift and move around in the night while they're drying. Did you guess the number of nails correctly? Did you guess nine nails? All right, anything for you guys. So, yes, Mr. Buble, but see, you walked through the front door. I walked through a Christmas tree. That's completely different. Right. No, I I'm, I'm agree with that, yes. Right, just have your people call my people. Love you, too. Love? Why do you say love you at the end? Yeah.